Africa. <laughs> okay. So your Sorry. surname as well. <laughs> my surname, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Obina Okwani. I'm at the LSC Africa Summit with Move Me Back. So shines on the beat. Back in the day, a good man called Mr. Faraday. I recently graduated from MIT with a degree in economics. And I spent the last six years of my life um, immersed or involving myself in social entrepreneurship. I uh, founded Exposure Box Academy three years ago, and we educated over 113 kids uh, in Lagos uh, on the principles of building and programming robots. And I'm hoping to continue that work, um, hopefully, one day building a school. Make we love one another, and that is the reason I want to say. I think the Africa, the LSE Africa Summit, like many other Africa-centered conferences around the world, just tries to bring amazing people together who are thinking the same, and in this case, people who are thinking about Africa's future and how they can be involved. So we all come hoping to meet other people who are looking to be involved in Africa, hoping to develop partnerships, relationships with people, um, so that you know we can find work to do or improve the work that we're already doing, as well as hear from people who have already done the work. Uh, people like uh, the Vice President, Professor Asimbajo who spoke this morning, or other individuals like Achaleke, who is McKinsey in Lagos, etc., etc. Um, you know, we're here to meet great people and, and hopefully find great things to do. Hey, I think Africans in the diaspora uh, not only can they make an impact on Africa's growth story, I think they have a bit of a responsibility to do so. Because uh, the, the question is, if they don't do it, who's going to do it? Um, you know, those Africans, those of us who have had the privilege of getting elite educations around the world, um, holding job positions at amazing companies, having incredible experiences uh, within the international community, um, we have so much to offer the world. Um, talk less of what we have to offer Africa, which is notorious for being so far behind. Um, so if people of our ilk, people of our um, competency, don't go back, and contribute to Africa. What, you know, what's gonna happen? Who do we expect is gonna come from the sky and develop our, our continent for us? My background with robotics uh, dates all the way back to when I was in high school. I attended, uh, at the time, what was DC's first STEM Academy. Um, I was the second graduating class at McKinley Technology High School. I graduated valedictorian, and I led the robotics team there. We competed in uh, the, the most well-known league in the world called the First Robotics League. Did that for three years, uh, and then that experience contributed to me being able to attend MIT. And when I got to MIT, I during my summers I would help to teach students uh, in DC where I was educated. Uh, how to build and program robots. I did that for two years, and then at some point the program was cancelled during the time of America's sequestration, and budgets were cut and all that, and I decided, hey, why not start this thing in, in, in Nigeria, right? So I went back, um, found that there was nothing like it in the whole of Nigeria, and I saw that as, a, as an opportunity. So I came back the following summer um, with uh, classmates in tow, and we launched the first session of the Exposure Robotics program. And the, the motivation or the goal of the program was to expose kids to science and tech, right? Because I think that's the first step to getting them to love it and getting them to pursue it in the long term. You just show them, hey, this is, this is, this is great stuff, it's cool, look at all the things you can do, you can build a robot, you can program it, um, and, and by and large, we succeeded. Uh, so students came in with so many different things that they had in, in their, on their minds to do at, for careers when they grew up and attended college and all that. And, you know, they all left with the realization that, oh, oh my goodness, these things that we see in movies, programming or whatever, I never thought I'd be able to do it, but hey, look at me now, right? Uh, we had kids um, who came in who had never used computers before, uh, but across the board in three days, they were all writing code. And at the end of five weeks, they were all writing um, scripts that allowed robots to behave autonomously. And, and these, these kids were between the ages of 15 and 17 from over 17 different states across Nigeria, both boys and girls. Nigeria, as much as 
as, as much as the rest of Africa does lag behind as far as technology is concerned. Um, so the question is, why robotics? Well, you know, I, I'm not, I don't think that robots are going to be running around the streets of Lagos anytime soon. I think Africa still has a long way to go in terms of manufacturing, where robotics um, is most useful across the across the world. But for me, robotics is all about, um, or my use of robotics is more about the educational experience. Right? Robotics is a multidisciplinary field. Engineering is involved. Neuroscience is increasingly being more and more involved. Even medicine is being more and more involved. The understanding of uh, the relation between ro robotic movements and the way you know biological organisms move, um, and robotics projects typically require multiple people. So, I mean, there's uh, the multiple uh, academic disciplines as well as the teamwork. And for students, um, it's such a rich educational experience. And that's that's the reason why I chose to employ robotics in the work that I do. And, um, you know, because it's such a, a rich educational experience, I think these kids are given the best opportunity to learn about technology and then to go forward and do more with it. So, I mean, we're yet to see what the results are going to be, but, uh, you know, my students that study robotics, they'll go on to be engineers of different sorts, they'll go on to be computer scientists, they'll go on to be doctors who use robots, um, you know, for surgery, etc. Can Africa leapfrog the rest of the world and lead them, uh, I guess, in terms of high-tech manufacturing? So I think it's important to understand where Africa lies currently. So uh, Africa as a whole contributes less than 1% to the global manufacturing GDP. So we consume everything and we produce virtually nothing. Um, so we have a long way to go. And I think if we're going to survive as a people, we have no choice but to leapfrog. And that's becoming more and more possible with, like you said, things like 3D printing and, and other manufacturing methods that are becoming so cheap compared to how expensive these things were just several decades ago. Um, so yeah, I think Africa definitely has a, has, has a chance. And I think that the root of that chance that they have is, is, uh, is its people, right? They need to be educated. I think as long as you have people who understand the technology, right? Enough to innovate and enough to produce things, eventually you're gonna have a, a force, you know, a workforce that can, that can do these things and that can manufacture. But that's not gonna happen without education. And I'm a strong believer that the earlier you start, the more effective those innovators will be. Um, I think it's it's no accident that when you look around, uh, like in the U.S. where I'm from, uh, the most successful entrepreneurs started when they were super young. And you could go through the list. Travis Kalanick of Uber, the fastest growing company in the history of companies. Um, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, uh, even Spiegel of Snapchat, who's a billionaire at the age of 26. Um, these gentlemen and some women started programming when they were 12. Elon Musk was his first computer game at 12. Um, Travis Kalanick was computer programming in the sixth grade. And, you know, by the time he was college age, he was an expert in, in certain special fields of engineering that only PhD candidates had been exposed to. Uh, they had an opportunity to learn about technology and engineering at, at an age where it was all about curiosity and the love of doing it, as opposed to some people who miss out on that experience and get to college and are, are then exposed to it. And then for them, they're looking for a way to create a livelihood, right? So the, the potential for creativity is so limited by that stage. I think we need to get these topics into schools at the primary level. Let kids program from, I mean, they can do it, it's not rocket science. And the younger they are, um, the, the more incredible they'll, they'll be by the time they, they reach adolescence and by, certainly by the time they, they get to college. My vision, if I could change one thing um, and bring everybody in Africa together to make it happen, it would be to get project-based STEM learning into schools everywhere across Africa, uh, you know, at, a, at an accessible price point for everybody, from primary school, all the way through high school, through college.